Hello and welcome to our Black Lives Matter staff discussion series. And today we will be discussing The Other Black Girl by Zakila, Zakia Dalila Harris, I think is how she says it. Um, so before we get into it, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Marissa and I work in the outreach department at the Ann Arbor District Library and I will be facilitating today. And my name is Jacob. I'm an, also a member of the outreach team. Um, yeah. I'm Lucy and I am um, a library tech in the youth department and um, I like doing these book discussions. <laughs> I'm Emily. Hi. Oh, go ahead, Emily. All right, I'm Emily and I'm a librarian. Um, I'm Elizabeth and I'm also a librarian. I'm in the collections department. So I select all of the adult fiction and audiobooks, but I also do a great deal of programming for youth and adult. And I am Beth and I also in the outreach team department um, as a library technician. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about this book today. Thanks. Um, is it too general if we just start with a uh... Did you like it? <laughs> um, I have a request actually. Yeah. This is kind of, I've never done this before, but I didn't understand what happened. Could someone summarize this book for me? I read the whole thing, I promise. And I truly did not get it. And I'm wondering if someone who feels like they got it could launch us so that I can better participate in like file things in my head or maybe no one got it but I bet some of you did because you guys are smart <laughs> I just read this so oh, you go ahead I read this when it first came out and I kind of had a similar reaction as you did Elizabeth and so rereading it I feel like I got it more and it was because I was prepared for there to be some magical realism at the end which I was not initially um so I don't know other people can jump in with the explanation but to make it Long things, very short. Uh, Nella is working in book publishing. And at the beginning of the book, Nella is a, a Black woman um, who has been in publishing for a while, but is still an assistant and is not quite getting the traction that she'd want in the workplace. Um, and is very excited when she sees that they have hired another Black girl assistant who she initially bonds with, but pretty quickly there seems to be some tension because this other uh, Black woman, Hazel, is really zooming through and getting all sorts of accolades and getting a lot of what Nella wants for herself. Um, so as they're wrestling with that, there are also chapters, very short chapters throughout the book uh, that jump in time and narrator that eventually you find out are this group of resistors who are trying to resist this mysterious thing that eventually, here's a spoiler, ends up being magical hair grease that helps um, or sometimes maybe help isn't the right word because for some of these young women, it's given and applied without their consent, uh, just kind of relax the world a little bit uh, so that the the problems uh, that are facing uh, everyone, but perhaps particularly uh, folks who are black, uh, just doesn't quite bother you as much. Um, and then Nella ends up kind of succumbing to that is my very quick synopsis. But I agree, Elizabeth, it gets confusing, especially if you aren't prepared for it to all of a sudden switch to almost sci-fi from what starts out as more like contemporary fiction. Yeah. That was brilliant. That was a really good recap. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I read it when it came out too, and I was kind of, you know, sort of, it was confusing. But so this time I thought, oh, well, I already read it, so I should just be able to breeze through. Well, I was still at, like, I don't remember. It was probably over page 200. Like, oh, not another person. Like, a whole new person was thrown in there, and it just was annoying. But, um, but ultimately, you know, if you look at just the synopsis, the way Emily explained it, that's that's what the book's about, you know, but there's a lot of extraneous stuff. You know, there's that whole other part with the author who um, was brought on board at Wagner Publishing, a, a black um, female author and her black 
publisher and they published a book that was like one of Nella's favorite books. So she felt really excited to be working in this space, but it's like this entirely white space. And then you find out that those people are also related to this um, mysterious subplot with the hair grease and the kind of um, invoking powers. So yeah, there are, there are a lot of different um, pieces, but I had to say, I read it when it first came out and then this time I listened to it and I, I enjoyed listening to it a lot. I thought um, for some reason, it just, it, it, the story was um, easier for me to get that way. Hmm. And I then think a lot of the book also. Go, go ahead, Jacob. I, I just a lot of the book is, I think, just exists to skewer certain cultural things like um, um efforts at making like it, it kind of takes a shot at dei in the workplace it takes a shot at um uh different things there's a satirical element that at times you, you go if you're not reading it it could be like is this for real and you're like no this is supposed to be funny or goofy or which sometimes the tone switches were also took you on a ride yeah i think it's taken a huge dig at the publishing world which is um risky when you're writing your first book but yes. i think there was a huge bidding war for it so you know um and i was also, shocked in the back it says you know she yeah. used to work at knott's double day she doesn't yeah. work there anymore in her right. uh, the other part and i was like oh wow yeah There's something sorry to interrupt uh, oh no and then, and then i also was thinking as i was reading it that like a lot of it is not necessarily for i, I mean i think it, a lot of it's written you know, it, you're going to have a different experience if you read that book and you're a Black person than you are if you are a white reader. So I think that that's part of it as well. Coming into this conversation, I thought to myself, this could turn into a scene from the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so the one thing that still, so the, because you know how we talked about how it jumps back in time, like back and forth. And so there was the Black, the two black women from the eighties, one of whom was a writer, one of whom was her publisher, they ended up kind of having a falling out. And so then was one of them kind of part of the resistance and one of them part of the perpetuation of the hair grease and the, okay. So they, that, and then one of them kind of like went into hiding, but then like reemerged towards the end to kind of like, she was part of the resistance and she came back to kind of like fight against what was happening right okay okay yeah. i'm just trying to piece it all together that is, yeah which, glad that we got into this discussion it, um because i think this seemed to be a common critique of the book online too that people did kind of struggle with the pacing the very you know two-thirds of the book are kind of like an office drama and then it takes a hard turn um and so like did do you think it worked do you think it felt successful i mean i kind of got a mix of like i'm kind of bored kind of confused and then like i don't know if it fully like landed for me i will say as much as i was confused especially with my first read i will say definitely the benefit of coming back to it a second time and i did like you did lucy and listen to it and they had uh multiple narrators which i think also helped with some of the character tracking um but even when I was a little confused by it, I still really enjoyed reading it. Um, and I think a lot of that is that that satire, that humor. Um, and I cared about most of the characters. So I, you know, I wanted Nella to succeed. And I wanted to know more about the all of the various little slices we got of, you know, Shani and all of all of the other folks in the past. Um, I don't know that it stuck the landing for me because I was there were still so many of those people where I left going, I think I want to know more about them. And I it's good when a book ends with some of that wondering, but I think I wondered it about too many people to be fully a hundred percent satisfied. But it's still a book I'd recommend to people because I it made me laugh a lot. I turned the pages, I enjoyed it. I, I was I propelled through the book by the um the dialogue was so fun um, to see how people talk to each other in the workplace, outside of the workplace and the microaggressions 
in, in, involved in that. Uh, I think the author wrote that dialogue in an incredibly, um, um, how do we even, uh, adept? Yeah. I don't think that's the yeah. right word. I don't Definitely. know if that word Definitely. That's the word. Definitely. That's the yeah. word. <laughs> yes. Um, and it, it felt like comedy. It felt real. And it, I think it exposed something uh, I, I hadn't really considered about how we treat each other in the workplace. Um, I was going to say there was a, what I found was like a kernel of what I believe the author was trying to convey where she, when she started talking about what OBGs were and how there's, do you remember that? But it was before everything else was exposed, but it was just a couple of paragraphs. And to me, it was like, wow, that was really helpful. And it seemed like it was what she was trying to convey from the beginning, but it got lost in uh, some of the extraneous stuff. You know what I mean? Yes, especially in the there's a, a port a part towards the end where um a character explains the hair grease and it was it was designed to basically make black women more docile. But then they're like, and a weird side effect is it also made them competitive against one another. And it felt like, oh, you, you I it's not much of an explanation. It uh, yeah. You know, it also seems like the last time I read it, I came away with, you know, the hair grease was a significant part of it. And this time, I don't know, maybe just because I was reading different multiple books, but it just didn't seem as in your face as as I took it the last time. And one other thing, though, I started watching the Hulu uh, uh, series and it's way different. If any, if people are watching that, I watched it. Oh, so yeah. different. And I, yeah, I was like, this is not what I remember. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, so it's it's strange that I thought that they did it the way they did because the author was involved in it. But anyway, um, did it land? I guess it'd be. I'd like to know what a what a black woman might say about that. Yeah, I was going to say that obviously I didn't fully grasp the book, but mostly because I felt like there were so many characters that, as someone else mentioned, were kind of left undone. And I was like, I felt a little lost. I thought like there was going to be more wrap up with each of the individual characters that would kind of tie things together and kind of help clarify for me. And I felt like that didn't happen at all with most of them. Basically, the only one we find out what what happens to is Nella at the end there. Um, but I did as a white woman appreciate or a white person reading this and um, really feeling like I got, um, obviously I would never understand, but I felt like I got a really interesting perspective of what it feels like to be a lone black woman in a workplace and the like microaggressions and struggles that that would be especially in a place like Wagner which was not particularly welcoming to a solo black woman so I thought that was that aspect was really well done and I really appreciated how repeatedly hit home that was and how Nella's processing that basically every day when she goes home you know whether it's with her friend or with her boyfriend or whatever so I thought that was really well done and I would be interested um in you know what others thought of that as well just because for me that was part of like probably the strongest part of the book just kind of feeling like wow this is giving me a really what seems like it must be an accurate perspective of what this is like I agree I had um I, I have mixed feelings about like the book as a whole and all of these other pieces but I think it really did microaggressions really well um like it's brought up pretty consistently she really does a good job of like kind of skewering her maybe colorblind well-meaning bosses and just how it all stacks on itself where she's kind of already frustrated and then incidents happen and it's just she gets more and more frustrated um and so I think that is a really good illustration of that um without having personally experienced that um related to race at least <laughs> I thought it was really interesting too, um, the arc that was dealing with the 
big book that Wagner was working on. I can't remember what the title was, but essentially it was a, a novel dealing with the opioid crisis. And it in, I think it was in its first edit of this, this novel, Book Within a Book, uh, there was some feedback to the author that he should include a character of color. And he ended up putting in a very stereotypical um, cartoonish, truly um, black woman whose life is kind of ravaged by this. Um, and it is obviously in this case, it's also it's turned up a little bit like satire is. Um, but Nella rightfully sees some issues with this. But then it the the story of how she navigates that and how she feels she is or isn't able to bring these up and then how these concerns are eventually received by the author. Um, and it made me think a lot about, you know, we we hear more and more about not only making sure that the, the, the stories are out there, the right stories are out there, but that they're told by the right people. Um, and I know that that's something that the publishing industry is continuing to, to wrestle with. Uh, and I think it's an interesting conversation with folks. Um, what was the book that came out maybe five years ago? Was it American Dirt? Uh, that there was a lot Dirt, of yeah. kind mm -hmm. of scandal around, you know, was this the right person to tell this story? But if this is also the way that this story gets heard, and uh, I've had some really interesting debates with people whose opinions I value uh, on that question. And I think that this, I was glad to see that it was given such a place in this book, especially given that it was set in the publishing world. Um, and it definitely reads accurately that the author spent some time in publishing everything that I have heard from folks who are in it um, or experienced to a much different and lesser degree with our own publishing arm here at AADL. Um, things feel like, yeah, this is, this is the way that this works uh, from the not so great things to also, yeah, this is how the cover design works. And this is how these are the, the things that happen that take something from manuscript to book. It read very true. I had never really considered the um, important role the publishing industry plays in basically what we see in the bookstore. If, if they decide what is published and what is not and what is not published, they decide what I see when I go into Barnes and Noble and what I don't see. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> I didn't, I had never even considered that. I thought about that too, Jacob, because like some of these books, it seemed like basically were read by like one or two people. And then the, the decision was made to move forward or not. And, you know, I'm not, super familiar with the publishing industry besides just being an avid reader. And I was like, wow, that is a lot of um, uh, responsibility is not the right word, but like a lot of power for like a couple people to just be like, yes or no to these manuscripts and make those choices. So that struck me as well. I thought it was so funny. The book was called Needles and Pins. Why wasn't it just <laughs> called Pins and Needles? It's so stupid. It's so funny. That's great. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I also thought was very realistic was uh, the tension between uh, Nella and Hazel, but but how how Nella was internalizing when she, as she was seeing Hazel becoming the it girl of the office and spending time in uh, Vera's office and uh, just that even talking about now it kind of I can remember just feeling just that the way you things happen at work sometimes where you're someone else is maybe getting more than or doing more than or you want to be in that chair or whatever which by the way I've totally removed myself from these horrible thoughts um um because I I don't know but I think it's a level of maturity too where you um you could just internalize what other people are doing and and how really it doesn't shouldn't affect you right okay well, exactly yeah, in this right. book, oh yeah sorry go ahead i was gonna say in this book she has the, the confusion of like hazel telling her one thing like i'm gonna support you do this thing and then like her seeing hazel go against what she said and do this other thing and get in the space where nella feels like she deserved to be but nella 
doesn't put herself forward on her own in any way. So it's, it, it, yeah, it's like an interesting um, little, you know, paradox or struggle there for her because she's not doing anything about it, but she's she's also like getting manipulated. It's interesting. I was shocked by the conversation where after Hazel does not stand up for Nella, Hazel talks Nella into the fact that it's no big deal. And I was like, that part was especially brilliant. But to piggyback off of what Beth was saying, I think what the book shows is how vapid and kind of inept the editors are. Like, they just kind of, like, flip through something or they ask somebody else to, and they're like, this is a masterpiece. This is Needles and Pins. This is... Um, which is just, I thought was just always uh, one of my favorite parts of the humor. It's a good explanation for why there's so many books out there, at least that I personally read, where I'm like, how did this get through the editors? Like, <laughs> did, did, were not more eyes on this? You know, so now we know. Yeah. I had also put it more into, like, the consumerism box of, like, Colin is obviously a cash cow where he's written a lot of books, so they don't want to call him out in any way, even if the other editors agree with Nella, it's just like, you know, he's going to bring in money and he's going to be a bestseller, um, which I think is probably true of a lot of prolific art authors who kind of a guaranteed hit, but should some of these books have a sensitivity reader? Probably. <laughs> um, and I wanted to circle back to Nella and Hazel. Do you, did you all feel Hel Hazel was the villain is she a villain in this is she the villain a villain i didn't like her like misleading nella or like lying to nella about backing her up in certain aspects like that was shady to me but i also found myself frustrated with nella at times like when she would get ready to speak up but then i felt like she would do it wrong you know or just like kind of get so pent up frustration that then just like put her foot in her mouth, you know, or like just not be the confident, confident, like I wanted her to be. I was like, dude, go to the movie with your boyfriend. Don't, you don't have to go to this event. Like it's completely fine, you know, or just stuff like that. So like, I think Hazel was the most villain like character in the book, but especially as I came to understand more what was happening Like it almost seemed like the publishing and like the like the 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 economy was the villain, you know, or whatever. So just my two cents. <laughs> and racism being the villain. <laughs> I feel like there's a meme out there that's like capitalism was the villain all along. <laughs> Cause I thought that too. It's like she's working so hard, giving up so much of herself to get ahead and get a promotion and it's like not even that good of a job and she's already been doing it for so long um which and I also had thought about that in terms of like the DEI work where we're expecting particularly people in minority groups to bring their authentic self to work and really you know be leaders in that area where we don't ask anyone else to be authentic at work and having to kind of give of themselves in ways that other people don't. Like, other people are allowed to clock in and clock out, and that's it. Um, I thought I had another thought about that. But, yeah, it, it just seems wild um, in this way. Like, she's doing so much to get those luncheons going, and no one comes. And then... Uh, she has so much anxiety about how she presents herself. And then Hazel comes as like a very proud Black woman, but also is not as anxious about it. And it's just kind of is. And it's it's like a, a weird tension between the two of them and how they each perceive their own space. Well, and plus uh, Nella being from Connecticut was also like, you know, she was uh un she was what's the word uh she felt like she she wasn't she it sounded like she thought she wasn't black enough or that she didn't have yeah because she didn't even hang out with black folks till she went to college 
Um, and there are things she missed out on. Well, and think about identity in your early 20s, even, even if everything has gone your way, struggling to figure out who you are as a person, who you are in the workplace, um, and where those two go together. I think I, as we're talking about this, it's just kind of hitting me like, oh, gosh, poor, poor all of them, honestly, uh, because they're in this this business where it's set up that maybe only one of them can succeed. And really, it'll be super lucky if even one of you do that they're they're Yeah, the, the characters aren't aren't the, the bad guys. It's, it's the what, system. They're, what they're handed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a certain amount of like, because the characters are young, I think it is emphasized that they're still growing up too. And you get the sense that Nella and Hazel to a certain extent is really trying to figure out who she is as a person, even outside of her job. Like, is she okay with dating a white guy? What is, how does she like to spend her time? Like, how does she like show that she values her friendships you know she's making mistakes she's trying to figure out and grow which like makes sense I think she's 25 or 26 in the book you know like that seems very normal and I thought that that lent some like non-satirical non-satirical like humanity to the book because that all seemed very real to me she's like oh like I should be doing this but I'm just like getting Chinese takeout every night because I'm stressed at work or like oh I talk about myself too much to my friend I need to like be better about that like she, you know she's just figuring stuff out too and so that felt very real to me both inside and outside of work I feel like uh, Nella was trying her best she was dealing with these issues earnestly while Hazel was like yeah the system's messed up but I'm going to give them what they want and Nella was Nella was saying, I'm interested in, in actively fighting against that all the time. And I'm actually willing to consider consider my life. And Hazel's like, I'm not considering my life. I'm gonna go ahead and be the queen bee of Wagner of Wagner books. Um, and you see that in her personal life too. But I guess so much of her personal life is recruiting these OBGs. Um I guess this is kind of off topic, but it was helpful for me to think of the book like an episode of The Twilight Zone. Mm. And then I was like, okay, I, I know that tone. Or like The Stepford Wives. Because it says on my cover, like The Stepford Wives. And I'm like, oh, I know that goofy sci-fi, like, with a moral tone. But anyways, I shouldn't have had this cup of coffee, guys. I'm <laughs> soaring. <laughs> well, in an interview, she did mention that she loved The Twilight Zone. So it's not wrong <laughs> i kind of yeah, wish i, I would have had that framing the first time i read it because i think i would have been more open to the ending but instead i was just taken by surprise and was like oh did you just not know how to end your book and so you put in magic which might be my own thing to it because i never like it when books do that and lots of books people love do that um and so the, with the second read kind of knowing that was where it was going i did feel much more so i i like that that at least the version that you read sort of gave you those hints on the cover that that was a piece of it. What was interesting to me about the magic and we're talking about the hair grease here was it felt unnecessary to me. Like it seemed like people who were on Hazel's team, whatever you want to call that, the OBG team or whatever could have just like kind of, like, I didn't feel like they needed magic to change their perspective or kind of be brainwashed, you know, like it felt like that could have happened authentically without that. And they could have all kind of felt, that, I, I don't know, that just seemed like, and I understand that it like, kind of like turned people quickly and made them more like, able to be converted to that side. So obviously, it takes a lot longer to like, convince someone that you don't care about your own like personality and values but I don't know it just seemed like that like we know people get brainwashed all the time in the real world so I was just like <laughs> it seemed like the like magical realism was an element that I was like that doesn't seem necessary to me I don't know but I didn't have a huge problem with it it was just like something I was like huh weird component but yeah I kind of wish I had been more fleshed out or more like I feel like it needed to lean harder into the sci-fi fantasy whatever we're calling it or right it could have just been not in the story at all um I think it part of what was confusing 
and made the pacing feel weird is it had like you know all the regular people and then this resistance and then this you know cabal of people trying to turn everyone and it just got muddy yeah in a way that what didn't fully it wasn't fully clear um but having said i didn't like that part i did really like that the author very masterfully gaslit everyone <laughs> like i think nella you know hazel certainly was convincing her of things at a certain point in the book i was like is nella the bad person here like is hazel right about this and i think it's kind of always a good characteristic of or a realistic villain when they're kind of maybe half right Yeah, the sci-fi part's hard. It's it, it's I maybe what it's expressing is that there is an an invisible structure in our workplaces that pit black women against each other, and it's not just by happenstance, but it really is kind of like a structure. It, it might it might even be a um, and so it, it is comparable to something that is uh, like a conspiracy. Maybe that's what the author is trying to say. But <laughs> I did laugh when it was like. Our other childhood friend, who then grew up to be a scientist, went ahead and developed the hair grease, and it worked perfectly. And, like, that was the explanation of how it came to be. I'm like, come on now. But it's yeah, a... I kept hearing a tagline of um, the devil meets Prada meets Get Out. So oh, yeah, yeah. I think that in my mind, I also had this idea of like horror being in there somewhere. And I'm wondering if that's like what she was trying to do with the hair grease piece is almost make it like so, um, I don't know, just this element of, of horror somehow. I mean, I'm not saying that I, I necessarily think it landed, but it definitely gave it kind of a creepy element, I would say, you know, like we're rubbing the stuff in your head that's gonna make it itch horribly and you know um so and then i also wonder with the hair grease like if there's this whole um you know it's like a um culture around like black women's hair both from like in, inside there and i think we learn a lot about that in the book but then also this um this perception this outside perception that people who are not black have about black women's hair and maybe that's why like the hair grease element was added because it's and i'm just like thinking about this now as we're talking about it but maybe that's part of what put it in there that made me think of one of the scenes i thought the book it was such an inconsequential scene but i thought it was handled really well um where hazel and nella are standing in the elevator and they're talking about their hair um, and the author points out that there's a, I don't know, a marketing intern or someone else in the elevator probably listening and that she's got her phone and she, maybe she's Googling to find out what these words mean. And I loved it because it kind of felt like it was a message to any white reader who might be wondering, what do they mean when they say the kitchen? What do these numbers and letters mean? I know they're talking about their hair. It was, I kind of, I liked that it didn't explain it, but also like said, remember you can use Google. Yeah, you, you, the you four C curl. Standing in the elevator, listening, and just Google it. Um, and I don't know whether that was an intentional bit or not, but I really liked it as a reminder, as a reader, uh, that yes, it's fine that you are here and reading a book that may not be written with you specifically in mind, um, but that means that you might have to do a little work to figure out what everyone's talking about. I do think this is a this comes at an interesting time where there is appetite for more black stories in general um and specifically like black horror which like I really like horror I don't even think I would call this book horror but it certainly like exists in conversation with some of these other stories like get out um or sorry to bother you which is more explicitly about like capitalism and being a workhorse, literally. <laughs> I remember that movie now. Sorry. Okay. Um, All you had to say was workhorse, and I remember. Right. There's um, another really good one called They Cloned Tyrone, which is about more about, um, you know, scientific testing and labs and brainwashing. Um, there's a movie called Black Hair, where it's a young woman gets a weave 
uh, to succeed. And it's like the hair is controlling her and it has a mind of its own. And so there's like all these different, also like hyper specific urban legends around brainwashing. And I don't know, like I fully don't, I only know of that from interviews about these other media, but I think it's really interesting and I'm here for it. And I want to watch all these movies again. Um, Does it, it, what's the, ep I don't remember it exactly, but the um, epitaph of this book is. Um, it's by Tana, Tana Nareev Du. Yeah, it's. It is, I can read it, it's short. Black history is black horror. Yeah, so like, I mean, now, now that you're saying all that more, so I'm thinking back, I'm like, wait a minute. She mentions horror right in the beginning, so. Um, so maybe we should talk about the TV show. I think you, Lucy and Bam said you'd watched part of it. How did you feel about it? It's differences. Did you like it? Was it? I've only watched the first episode. I feel like I, I liked it when it was starting out and then it got for me, um, like the, the parts of the book that were all that seem that are satirical or um you know like maybe even magical realism in the show they just kind of landed like absurd in a way you're just kind of like you know um because i think they were just cramming so much in there so it just felt like this other um i don't know what the right word is but it just it didn't and it, and it was different. The story was different. So maybe they didn't pick the right pieces to put in. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's different. It's, um, the, for one thing, the, the boyfriend has way more, uh, of a part in the, in the show. Um, and so does her, her friend who I forgot her name. Lakia? No. Malika. I wish there was Malika. more Malika. I loved yeah. her in the book. Yeah, yeah, I liked her too, and I, I do like her on the show, but it's, she is a completely different character. I feel like there's a lot more Richard Wagner in the show too. The, the um, main the guy who's founded the publishing house, like he was a big character in the show. Well, isn't the one guy you know that was from Will and Grace? Isn't he the guy? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but different a different kind of personality. Yeah, like I don't feel in the book we turned we heard tons about Richard Wagner, but in the oh, show he definitely right. was like right, yes, a big part of the story. So. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, is the acting in the show good or is it fine? Or I do like the carrot Nella, and I mean, I I think the acting is pretty pretty good. Um, it's just kind of puzzling because I you know, it's not the same story. And I'm watching it with my husband and he's like, it's so interesting when weird. they, sorry, everyone froze. Uh... Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Am I okay? Uh, I find it really interesting that um, the way that different books are changed to screen, especially now that those limited series TV tends to be the way they do it. Um, and, you know, some, the two that I like the best uh, of that I've read and seen one of them does it very literally and very very close to the book uh Fleischman is missing which I loved the book loved the miniseries and one was very different which I also loved which was Station Eleven which I also loved the book and loved the miniseries and they are very different from each other um but it takes for those two that I loved I feel like almost every other one I watch I'm disappointed by but I keep yeah, getting bit I know, and I think if you've read the book first, like this happens to me, a lot, I think this happened with the other black girl. I was waiting for the things I remembered from the book. And so then maybe you're not even like really focusing on what the show is giving you. Like Station Eleven, they were different enough that they were both like beautiful in their own way. And, and um, but yeah, like, I think maybe now that you're saying that with the other black girl, I think I was just like, well, where's the piece about, where's this, you know, so. Yeah, I'm. I am getting preoccupied with with the book versus 
the show and I I do want to see the end of the show and I'm really really curious how it ends if it's the way the book ends I have a feeling it's not going to be but we got to mix it up <laughs> somehow yeah I watched the first up or the first two episodes just because I wanted to see for this discussion how it would kind of line up um and it's interesting what they did kind of with genre like I feel like the show goes hard into the more horror elements like right from the beginning with music and lighting and all of the tone um it feels faster paced um like it just has the pacing of more of a thriller than the book um yeah I mean I would definitely want to finish it um I do think it's interesting they had, um, I think Rashida Jones is one of the creators or writers um, who's like obviously like a great comedy writer. And they, they were definitely like funny laugh out loud parts for me, at least in the first episode. Um, like the whoever her bought Vera, I think, is kind of chastising Nella for doing something silly. And she's like, and I trusted you and you're the godmother to my dog. <laughs> and it just oh, like... Yeah. Like, there's certain pieces that I think landed better from having an actual comedy writer involved um, or just felt more fleshed out in a way. But yeah, I'm curious where all of it is going. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, Marissa. Go oh. ahead. Uh -huh. uh, I was just thinking, like, I know the book deals with very serious subjects, um, as the show does as well, I assume. But like, in a lot of ways, it's sort of goofy, too. Like, there's, like, there's very goofy elements that, like, I think, if done well in a show, could, like, be quite funny, even though the, like, overall subject is more serious. But, like, I don't know. Like, even the hair gel is, like, kind of goofy. Like, that element, you know? And, like, Vera, like, all of the publishing house leads are these, like, goofy characters. Like, the lady with the glasses who are, like, tinted and stuff. And, like... They are constantly like showing the photos of her dog and like blah, 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 you know. And then the one author who, you know, Nella calls racist and his like hat that's just like that he's like dabbing his eyes with or whatever is very goofy. So like I could see that the show potentially being funny if, you know, depending on the writing. So maybe there's something about when I was reading it, it just didn't feel that outlandish. Like I, maybe I'm just so used to like white nonsense that it felt so real, but it didn't even occur to me that it was comedic until I saw it visually on TV. <laughs> if that makes sense. I think that absolutely is what uh, propelled me through the reading experience was that I was like, Oh, this is funny. And that's what you, the dialogue, the the satire, but the humor as well. There's lots of funny moments. When Richard's at Curl Central and Richard's like, what's up, guys? It's like, oh, no. Oh, there's so many. There's a lot of funny moments I'm, I'm reflecting on. Oh, yeah. That's another tidbit of just Richard, white man in power with a <laughs> certain... <laughs> with certain something... <laughs> Um, well, that the the whole part about Richard it being at the at uh, Curl Central um, is that what it's called? Uh, just th that that got Nella so motivated to go, and just the fact that he was I don't know there was something about the way that was uh, portrayed that it just it could really I could it was really getting to Nella, and I, I could it was getting to me too. You know the way I could feel for her that uh, Hazel was getting to, you know, rise above um, and have have Richard into the fold and donating money and being, you know, at her shop and all that sort of, you know, <clears throat> just made it harder for Noah. <clears throat> okay, so my last question is, would you use the grease? <laughs> Like, I know it's kind of a silly question because it's a silly book, but it, um, when we're thinking about Hazel as a villain or not a villain, like, I can't say I'm not, I wouldn't be tempted. I mean, obviously I'm from a very different context, but the thought of just making my life a little easier. And well, like, yes, like what you were saying, Marissa, about like white nonsense. I mean, you know, it just, 
it is nonsense and yet it is like the the lay of the land and so it's just like how can you how can you argue with nonsense like you know what i mean it's just you might just want to be like but you know yeah i i mean i it's not it doesn't I'm not, it's not coming from the same place for me but yeah i don't know I, I would use the grease because I'm always interested in trying different things in my hair. I don't know that I would use the same thing every day. I never do. So, yeah, I would try it. It wouldn't work for us. We're white. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't work question. for us. <laughs> <laughs> Is, I guess, how much do you owe to your community? Of Are you willing to fight the fight in the way that Nell is trying to fight the fight because Hazel has obviously kind of not fighting the fight in the same way, but she's still a black woman in publishing who is still has very explicit goals of getting other black people published. She has this whole nonprofit with uh, young poets. Like is she's still doing good things. So is it, you know, assimilation, well, that's like the central debate, right? Like if, you know, like I think her argument is like we're getting more black folks into the industry. We are like having more black folks at the top of, you know, or more like at higher level, higher paying jobs. And like, that's the goal. But then are people like Richard, like ever really being confronted or people like Colin who wrote needles and pins, like they're just sailing along so is there significant change like yes and no right like i don't know is it possible to make change from within the existing structure right good lots to think about does anyone else have any other final thoughts they got to get out you want to go down the rabbit hole um, so in the very last epilogue, or the very, the epilogue rather, so Nella is fully um, OBG'd, and I noticed her character's name is Delilah Henson, and the author's name is Zakia Delilah Harris. Mm. I wonder if, if, if a lot of the character of Nella comes from her personal experiences, and I'm like, Delilah Henson and Delilah Harris? That's too close to not be some sort of, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Well, and I was just like, dun, dun, dun. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, that, maybe she was folding herself into the, the canon of what this story is, you know, like, what would have happened if she stayed in the publishing industry or something like that? But she... From what I read um, about her, you know, I, she's also from Connecticut. And so I think some of the same attributes of her growing up in more whiteness, um, also publishing in in, uh, in Manhattan. Um, but then the way her book got catapulted, I mean, it's pretty, it's almost the way um, Hazel was being catapulted in her position like it the, the i just finished a, a reading an article and it said that her book deal was done in like six weeks or something and that's unheard of it's, it takes months and you know it's just it's interesting it's almost like they were all falling over themselves to get the chance to see what we can do you know maybe i don't know the the publishers we're not that bad we're publishing this book really fast yeah um, one more thing I'm just thinking of, not to keep going, but um, Jacob, when you're talking about names, you know, Nella's um, name, like, I, I feel like it, it's natu like, naturally reminds me of Nella Larson, who wrote a book uh, called Passing about two women, yes. one of whom is passing for white. And so it just seems like the parallels there are pretty. Totally. Pretty I, I actually read passing right around the time I read the other black girl the last time. And so, yeah, I, I remember putting those two together right away. Oh, we got in. 
Ann might have had the wrong time. Seems likely. Um, well, the last thing I wanted to mention was if anyone is interested in hearing some Black perspectives on this, there's some really good podcasts out there that I listen to um, to prepare for this. And so I would encourage anyone to search for, I think I just searched for the other Black girl. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, of pod podcasts about books. Um, some that I really liked were the Black Chick, Black Chick Lit podcast, Debra's Bookshelf, and there's one actually with Tanana Ravedu called Life Writing, which was very interesting. She interviewed the author. Um, so highly recommend those if you're looking for some non-white <laughs> voices to go along with this. I would be it super interested in that. I was going to ask if you had in your like prep for this mm -hmm. encountered any um, Black perspectives on this because I would I, I would just be really curious. And I like cool. the too long... TLDRs that it's different perspective of how it was interpreted and read and like it which shouldn't be a shock but they had some very interesting um thoughts and ideas that I would recommend so thank you everybody